they were talking about giving back to the community and then um, the individual who was speaking was talking about preparing foods and uh, you know like maybe like gloves and stuff to give to homeless people in Monroe Park and you know at this time I was in my third year my last year here at VCU so I'd already kind of like heard the spiels about how to help the community a good amount of times by now and um, you know I, I thought to myself all right, here we go again. Everybody has the same idea. Then every single person who has the idea to give these homeless people food and gloves thinks that it's such a great idea, you know, as if everybody hasn't already thought of that. And it doesn't really, you know, address the root of the problem. You know, why are these people homeless? Why can't they get out of it? And in a way, you're even perpetuating their homelessness by providing them you know, very transient, limited resources, such as food. Because, um, you know, where are they going to get the food next time? Oh, they can come back in a week, or every single day of the week, they know where to go for food. So they just keep doing that, and then just kind of live off of those organizations that give them food. So in a way, you're kind of perpetuating their homelessness. So understanding that, and obviously not as well-developed as, you know, I spoke then. Back then, it was more like, man, this is annoying. Everybody says the same thing. We all know deep in our heart that it's not really helping them. So then I literally had a notebook in front of me. So I just, and I had a pencil and I just sat there and then I was like, goal, actually end homelessness. And then I just wrote out all the committees, like the eight committees that IRISE has formed. I did it right there. So it was like committee of housing accommodations, committee of, uh, you know, job opportunities, committee of candidate exploration, committee of outreach all these different committees, and I wrote exactly what their task was going to be. And then I started thinking in my head, you know, who are the people that I knew at the time that had the biggest hearts and that I could see me speaking with and getting them on board. And so over the course of, that was in the spring. So over the course of the summer, I really let the idea settle in my mind. I started thinking of like what to call it, because um, IRIs wasn't something that came to me right away. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, and I started reaching out to people over the summer. And then by the time the fall came around, we actually became an organization. We started meeting, and then we made it happen. So I'm not doing iRise um, because I have some obsession with helping homeless people, right? There was never, like, some moment in time where I saw a homeless person, and it was, like, a traumatic experience for me, and I was like, I have to start helping these people. Um, I don't really have any homelessness that exists in my family. And I'm just I'm pointing out these things because I feel like those are the kind of things that a lot of people almost expect. To be honest, I just started helping homeless people because I saw the current services being provided and me being a human being, I just didn't feel as though that was good enough. I just felt like we all as human beings, all of us being equals, there's no reason why we should look at another human being and, you know, not give them the opportunities or chance to get out of their situation. Because a lot of these individuals, you might paint homelessness with a broad brush and say, oh, they're drug abusers, oh, they're alcohol, you know, they're experiencing alcoholism, whatever. People will paint it with a broad brush, but there's people that have horrible things happen to them that are completely out of their control. And then where do you go? The only place is the streets. And so recognizing that and recognizing that things really do happen to these people that are out of their control, I think that's just a big motivation to help them.